Hey guys, thank you for checking out this episode. We'd love your support by heading to patreon.com forward slash freshly grounded. It really does make a difference in helping us continue making this content. And if not, no stress. Enjoy. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, brothers and sisters, welcome to Freshly Grounded. Uh, this week's episode, we are joined with uh, Mohammed from Holland, Mohammed Smenning, um, uh, Mohammed. Ibn Abu Muhammad, uh, <laughs> and uh, he's gonna be. He can hear me right now. He's in the green room. He's in the virtual green room. Uh, uh, yeah, we got Muhammad again, which is always a great guest to have on on Fresh Ground. I think we last had him on about five six months ago, uh, right at the beginning of uh, the whole palaver that's been happening in the world. Uh, so it'd be lovely to catch up with Muhammad. He's always a, a highly requested guest, and always amazing to have a conversation with him. Uh, also because he's you know genuinely a really good friend of mine. And um, it's always nice having conversations with friends um, on here. Now, before we get started, uh, just to let you guys know that we do have the Fresh Grounded game back in stock, which is our Fresh Grounded uh, card game. And um, it's been flying off the shelves. It really has been. And we really thank you for that. And uh, so we've had to like order, like this is like our third or fourth batch, alhamdulillah, that we've ordered. And the batches are getting bigger and bigger as, they, as they're coming, which is really cool as well. Uh, but check them out at freshlygrounded.com forward slash the game and unlock some great conversation between you and your loved ones. And uh, also... Um, the uh, uh ah the winter the winter the winter campaign we're doing so basically we've kind of teamed up with the human appeal to raise money to support uh families uh, in yemen by providing them winter essentials um that's what we've gone ahead and done and uh you guys what we're looking for is your guys is you guys to support us basically and the way you guys can support us is not only by donating or not even by donating at all perhaps uh but by setting up a page and um kind of taking care of one family so one family uh to have food water blankets and all the essentials for um uh, for winter is uh, 315 pounds and so if you basically uh, go to the link in the bio uh, or link in the description and then you click join team you can join our team and uh, then you can set your target as 315 pounds and then if everybody does that then there'll be loads of 315 pounds and they all kind of accumulate as a freshly grounded uh, kind of fund so please do do that if you get a chance to to uh, just kind of blast your link all over social media and over WhatsApp and it makes a huge difference. Uh, so thank you very much for that. And without any further ado, as always, this is Freshly Grounded. Let's get into it. And welcome to a Freshly Grounded, the brand new podcast. Well, it's not exactly brand new anymore, is it? W- welcome to Freshly Grounded, the p- podcast. That's better. Created by best friends Faisal and Sam. Huh? I welcome. I said welcome to freshly grounded. After that bit. Created by. After that bit. Best friends Faisal and Sam. Really? And we are on. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my dear respected brother and friend Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Faisal. Hope you're doing well, man. It's been some time, isn't it? It's been a very long time, man. Well, not long actually. We um we've been keeping fairly in touch, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, okay, but but let, even for the way we do things, it's what five six months ago that we did the last show. So yeah, yeah, relatively, it's, five, it's shorter than usual. Usually, we take more time apart. Yeah, that's true. That's true. We do take more time apart. So um, but, it, but actually, it's always. I have a bone to pick with you, bro. Okay. What, what's always. that all about with best friends, Faisal and Sam? Where, when have you caught me your best friend? Like, how do who knows you first, Faisal? Like, who knows you first, Faisal? Like, Sam or me? I think I think the one thing that people may not know is the fact that I met you first, like out of everybody. I in know. The entire, Look, I remember, yeah. Mr. Izaha. I remember. Okay. Yeah. I will never forget that day in Westfield. Yeah. But yeah. I want my credits. That's what. That's, that's all I'm saying. I want my credits. Yeah, I think people don't even know the story. So, like, um, I, when I started Azaha, I messaged uh, Mohammed from, I think, maybe even the Azaha account. And I was like, um, listen, like, um, we'd love to give you some free um, clothing and stuff. And uh, Mohammed was like, oh, yeah, I'm actually down in, in London, like, this week or next week or whatever. Like, let's meet up. And so we met in Westfield. And, like, you were the first ever person I was ever met. Like, and you were in my first ever vlog. The first ever video yeah, I ever I released know. on YouTube was me meeting Mohammed. And I don't think that's even uh, online on YouTube anymore. I think that's unlisted. 
Yeah, no, Maybe. my face. I remember, man. I even remember that you, you took that one picture, like with me, Melo, Julian, I think, and yeah. with you. I'm not sure yeah. if Musa was with us at that time, but that was that was the. I think yeah, it was man, you, Melo, and meeting. Julian. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it wasn't the prayer room where we met, like in Westfield Shepherd's Bush. No, not Shepherd's Bush. The other ones. The other one, I think. No, no, it was, it was Shepherd's Bush. Yeah, Shepherd's White Bush? City, Shepherd's Bush, yeah. Yeah, all right then. And then that prayer room there with, the, with those big couches. Yeah. Bro, I remember, man. SubhanAllah, it's been quite some time. So how have That's you been crazy. holding up in this whole pandemic? Alhamdulillah, bro. I've been holding up. Um, uh, we're basically back in a lockdown in the UK. But um, mm-hmm. it's a bit it's a bit less of a lockdown than the one before. Um, in In that there's a... Um, you're, you're kind of... It's, it's a bit more... Um, flexible for work mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. as opposed to the last one it was more like you kind of had to work for home uh, but this time kind of as long as you've got the precautions right and and some measures uh, in place and you're a certain yeah, type of yeah. business then you are allowed to travel for work which has been very very helpful how, how was mm-hmm. it like in Holland right now? Holland uh, they called it a soft lockdown we went from stages to stages uh, okay. a couple of weeks ago we had like 10,000 people getting infected day by day on a day to day basis and it was crazy, but now it went down to 5,000 on a scale of 17 million people. So it is doable. It's all right. Uh, but in my city, in Rotterdam, that's basically basically where um, the headquarters are for management of the whole corona pandemic in this country, locally at least. So I, I, I see all the cases basically in it. So um, the way I look at it, this lockdown <clears throat> closed every... Uh, every place where you usually would be able, able to gra- grab a burger or to eat something. You can take out, though, but you're not allowed to eat in. Uh, they yeah, same here. Uh, masks everywhere. Um, masjids are not, not necessarily closed because they can't close them by law. By law, the Netherlands, wallah, alhamdulillah, we're blessed, man. State has nothing to say about religion, and religion has nothing to say about state. So, therefore, they can never, ever, ever say you're not allowed to do this. Even when we come together with 10 million people, they can't shut us down. But... But it, we are responsible for all of these people, so we'll never do something like that. We closed the masjid during the week. We only opened it for Juma. So we said, listen, the five daily prayers are prayers you're responsible yourself for. That's, not, that's something you can do at home. You're not praying in your houses, but Juma is something you need to do in a congregation. So only 30 people are allowed. You need to get a ticket, uh, time slots. And then we do three Jumas with three different imams and three different groups. So at least in our masjid, 90 people away can pray. We can clean. People wear face masks, bring their own prayer mat. The whole shebang. So, so you, we got you used to it, every week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do one in English, actually. Every week. Oh, really? Yeah, we have uh, a lot of expats working here, man. They don't speak Arabic and they don't speak Dutch. So we do a uh, Jamar in English. So you'd actually be able to do one. You're probably one of the rare imams that, was, that would be able to do one in English, one in Arabic, and one in uh, Dutch. Well, my Arabic is not that good that, that I trust myself doing a khutbah. I really don't. Um, so, you never, you, pardon? You never, you never know. You're a, um, you could just do like a really like uh, a, short, a short khutbah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you, you, you can you just moments. recite some Quran and say, Hey, you did yeah. a khutbah, bro. Exactly. Ain't nobody can hadith. take that away from you. Yeah. yeah. Khalas, I think your, uh, your, your webcam seems to have gone off. I think yeah, that, I don't I, know if you got messages. Someone is calling me. Let me give me a second. Nice. What I'll do is. Uh, I suppose if you go on airplane mode, then your Wi Fi would. Yeah, I did. I did. I just did. I'm just turning okay. my headphones on still. That's the only thing. If I get the AirPods running in a second. Yeah, everything should be fine now. Alhamdulillah. Uh, I turned everything off. Only Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is available. Um, so yeah, Alhamdulillah, no, 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 man. Uh, us everything going well. Uh, but like, I'm concerned for the people in this country, though, because I see that mental health is going down, man. The status of people and, and the way they take care of it, especially, especially with Muslims, man. They, they don't acknowledge it. Uh, a lot of the students of mine are, are, are depressed. Uh, a lot of uh, youth that contact me are depressed. And yeah, they don't know what to do with it. So on that side, everything is going downhill. On all the other side, things are quite all right, alhamdulillah. Yeah, there seems to be quite a similar pattern here. However, um, do you think that, you know, we often say that, uh, that you know, the Muslims, they don't acknowledge mental health. Yeah. And I think that we've been saying that so much recently that perhaps, um, has that not changed now? 
وحبيبي فايزو ذا ثينج از يا باك ان ذا دايز اند نوت تو باش اور سكولرز يا والله وي لاف اور سكولرز وي ليرن فروم ذيم وي تيك فروم ذيم ذير واي فور اس تو جيت كلوز تو الله سبحانه وتعالى بس ذا سكولرز باك ان ذا دايز يوز تو هاف ا تراديشن اند ذا تراديشن واز تو ستدي مولتيبل ديسيبلينز And with those multiple disciplines, they will find a, a, a niche where they would excel in. And with that, they will teach the people and guide them. Remember Shafi, a good example in language and in fiqh. Both of them he mastered so people could come to study for language purposes to him. So they can unlock different studies or they can come for fiqh to him. Uh, and, and that will be beneficial as well. Imam Malik used to love hadith and fiqh a lot, right? Abu Hanifa used to love um, uh, what, what we would call Enmul Kalab, like the way of speech, dis- discussions, and combine that with fiqh. So everybody used to have their own discipline. Ghazali, for example, he study philosophy. And bro, I don't care what anyone says about Ghazali. I don't really give a crap. Wallahi, that man, he stood up against disbelievers with their weird ideologies and their kufr and shirk. He studied their books, he mastered their books, and he, f- he refuted their books, bro. So you could see all over the scope, different types of scholars have multiple disciplines. And those scholars were dealing with issues that they perceived that were uh, permanent in, in their society, right? And that's something that the Muslim community has not matured in yet, but we're getting there. You're right. We've been saying a lo- uh, for a long time, Muslims don't appreciate uh, mental health. They don't acknowledge um, uh, depression and stuff like that. But we're getting there. There is an awareness that the imams on, on a day-to-day basis are not equipped of understanding and sympathizing with a community member who has uh, depression or anxiety. For example, you, Faisal, right? You have a turbulent life. You're working very hard. There's pressure on you. You're a family man. Uh, you and your brother have a company. You know what I love about you, Mohammed. I love that you're always so like honest and raw. Like with me, like uh, I remember in the last podcast you said something to me as well. Um, but it's I, I love the fact that like you say things that other people don't say. But it's like so, like uh, Faisal, you have a turbulent life. Anyone else would be like a turbulent life? But when it comes with you, it's always so. Um, it's so pure. To, uh, no, but uh, it is what it is, what is isn't it? I I see how hard you work. Uh, it's not exactly. something that I've just seen today or yesterday. Even with the next phase, bro, you, you was that dude early in the morning after Fajr recording three episodes. Just you want to have something in stock. You had a goal. <laughs> First, you talk with Musa for an hour. Then you talk with me for an hour. Then you figure out that the audio with Musa wasn't good. So you do it again. Then you invite Jilly. Like you're always looking and trying to, uh, to, 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 how do you say that? To bring your vision forward, right? So you have a turbulent life. And besides that, you have responsibilities. You're a family man, man. I, I know how close you are with your parents. I know that you're very close with your siblings. Uh, you have your friends. You have your Islamic studies. I'm not trying to hype you up, but just to give an example. You as a, Allahumma barik, a little bit above average, not to toot your horn too much, a little bit above average, successful brother, with the same responsibilities that anybody else has, is able to fall into depression. For example, Faisal, this happens to you. May Allah protect you from it. You go uh, to your local teacher of Arabic or you speak to the imam in the masjid who gave a beautiful khutbah. You're like, Sheikh, I don't feel good, man. Like, I don't know why it is. I didn't pinpoint it already. I just, I just feel like, man. Like, you, you're not able to ascribe it yet. You know what? A majority of them will answer to you, what they will tell you. The more, wallahi, the more you do dhikr, the more you do dhikr. The heart will find rest. And billahi alayk, that is true. Allah says this in the Quran. But Allah never, ever, ever disqualifies the feelings of someone who is anxious or depressed if the depression or the anxiety doesn't go out of bounds. You know what I mean? And that acknowledgement, that's not there yet. Let me take you through three very short examples. Three very short examples. We can even do more. The Prophet ﷺ was experiencing at one time of his life so much depression and anxiety and pressure and, 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 um, and discomfort that an entire year of his life was called Amul Huzn, the year of sorrow. Like seriously, man. Not one, two, three, multiple tragedies. And what did Allah do? Did Allah give him just the ayah at that moment? Just don't worry about it. Do dhikr, pray more. Stay in Qiyamul Layl, and Allah will allow your heart to feel steadfast. No, man. You know what he did, Faisal? Allah invited the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, up to Isra'ul Mi'raj. 
acknowledging his pain, showing him what he's actually working for, giving him perspective, and telling him, you are allowed to feel the way you feel, but now rejoice because I'm inviting you to a place that even Musa didn't go to. That, that type of love, that's what we need for our souls, man. That's the juice that will get us to the next chapter. That's example number one. Example number two, a mother being afraid that she's losing her son. The mother of Musa, she had ilham. We call it ilham faizul. There was some sort of a um, revelation done to her in a dream. She's not a prophetess, but some sort of revelation. Put your son into the basket, put him in the river, and Allah will look after him. He's already, uh, if you keep him with you, he's going to be assassinated. So this is the best course of action. She made a conscious decision. She had tawakkul in Allah. She put her son Musa in the basket and she let go. And Allah says, And we brought her son back to her, threw it away so she doesn't need to feel depressed and sorrow anymore and anxious anymore. She doesn't need to feel that, 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 knot in, that, 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 that tight knot in her heart, you know? Don't worry about it. The father of Yusuf, after losing Yusuf, being a prophet himself, knowing that his son eventually will come back to him in a way, he was crying so much that he became blind. Like seriously, he became blind. And those sons of him that put him in that situation at one point said, Dad, really? Come on, man. All these years, you're going to keep on crying? You're going to keep feeling bad? He said, hey, my sorrow and my fear and my pain and my anxiety ain't for you guys. It ain't to, to, to ask for sympathy from you guys. I'm complaining to Allah. I'm asking Allah. I don't have any shame of feeling sad or feeling pressure or being afraid of failing as long as I'm complaining to Allah shouldn't go out of those bounds and those bounds are phase of one thing never blame allah if you don't go to that and you don't feel too sorry for yourself but you are just acknowledging your pain that's a way of self-love man and that's going to help you develop you know that's that that thing that our umma misses the acknowledgement of you're a human being i love you you can feel you can feel pressure it's fine it's part of life the first thing a child does when it's in this world when it's born it cries, man. It cries. This world is full of sorrow and pain and whatever. It's just because of social media that you and I have a unique way of looking into the most intimate and happy moments of each other's life. And then we mirror immediately. For example, I see you uh, with a picture of your missus on, on, on your Instagram. That you only have your family members and your close friends, right? And you guys are sipping a, 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 a iced tea. On the coach, uh, on the coast of of of, of Myanmar, for example. Ooh, ooh, whatever, just, yeah? just to clarify, this is a completely made up scenario. <laughs> yeah, made up scenario, made up scenario. But the thing is, I see that, and I love you, bro. I love you, yeah. So it's not because of uh, of any envy of any anything, but I see that intimate moment of happiness from you. I don't know how you're feeling right now, and I don't know if you and your missus have any issues. But the immediate reaction my brain does: Why don't I have that? What's wrong with me that I don't have? What Faisal has. Although I love you, and although I said Allah, I'm about it, you know, that's the thing and the harm that we are consistently causing to ourselves by looking at these um, little pieces of happiness and maybe well deserved hard work uh, pieces of happiness, and we are internalizing them and criticizing ourselves. And that's why the University of Amsterdam just released a new paper saying that seven out of 10 students are suffering from keeping up with this society and the expectations from it. Because everybody has success. They don't only have that success, but they broadcast that success. You don't have perspective. You don't know how long he worked for. You don't know how many years Faisal was sitting alone on a couch praying for a missus. And now Allah has blessed him after 30 years of patience. Let, let, let the guy enjoy. He didn't get that out of nowhere. So it's unfair for you to be like, oh, Faisal has that. Why don't I have that? I probably suck. I'm a bad person. Oh, that pressure is so unhealthy, man. And, and, and that, that's, that's the thing that I'm afraid for, uh, which is festering right now in our communities. One other thing, yeah? yeah? Go ahead. One other thing, yeah. You know, they did a research, phase of that uh, women that are, uh, that are suffering from uh, postpartum depression, right? Uh, after they get birth. And, and uh, in some states, women are an emotionally... Uh, they went through trauma and they went through a lot. So it's quite common that women after pregnancy suffer from stuff like this, right? They did a research that if their husbands or their fathers or someone they really love, maybe their mother holds them for over four minutes close to them, 
and just gives them that safe space, it has the same effect on them as a, uh, as a lot of the antidepressants. Same effect. Wow. Wow. Same effect, bro. Because you get perspective and you feel safe and you're able to leave, leave your worries for a second. In this pandemic, you're not allowed to touch anyone. You can't even give your own mother a kiss. Uh, you, you should socially distance. Besides that, everybody's on their phones. Even more people share. More people want to show that they have a good life because that's a way for them to cope with the issues in their life. And that entire cocktail, people are sipping that Kool-Aid and they are getting infected. Mm. May Allah protect us, man. I mean, you know, uh, let's just, if, if we're just tracking back the conversation, mm. you mentioned earlier on, you said that one of the things that helps a person uh, who is going through uh, a rough time is mm. initially before kind of trying to provide some sort of uh, like antidote um, mm. to, to, to provide love, right? Like a, an, yeah. an immense amount of it, uh, mm. like to, to, to promote self-love within themselves, but also to provide love to them. And you know what that reminds me of, right? Uh, it reminds me of the first time I ever heard of this concept of um, trying to like gain, uh, uh, trying to like, um, trying to like let something sink in before trying to find an antidote, before trying to fix it, before trying to trying to do something. And, and that's essentially what you're saying. You're saying like when someone is in that phase, before trying to say to them, do this, do that, do this, first just give them time, give them patience, give them love, give them a cuddle, right? And um, it's really weird the first place I actually heard of this concept um, because I remember hearing it in like year four or five, we had to study Shakespeare yeah. in school. And because yeah. of, and it's really weird because I don't remember a lot of things from like studying in, in, uh -huh. in primary school and all this kind of stuff. But I specifically remember this one part of Shakespeare sticking out to me. And uh, it was uh, Macbeth, maybe? Is Macbeth really yeah, Shakespeare? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, what happened is Macbeth found out that his uh, wife got killed, maybe? I'm not sure. And the news came to him, right? I can't remember the story, but someone got killed. I think maybe his child or his wife, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and he was, I think, the leader of his people. And so um, when they found out, the people came to him straight away and they said, um, "Like Macbeth, are you not gonna uh, 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 let's go and let's go and get revenge? Let's go and kill the person who killed your family." Right. And uh, they were like saying, "Come on, like let's kind of let's get a move on," because mm. he was not doing anything at the time. Mm. And he replied to them and he said, "Wait." Um, uh, can you not let me feel sorrow before seeking my revenge? Or can you not let me oh, feel wow. uh, sadness before seeking my revenge? And bro, it's so weird how that stuck to me from like when I was, well, how old are you in year five? You're like, uh, come on, 10 years old, nine years old. Um, but that stuck with me. And I remember it so clearly because I remember thinking to myself, wow, this is a new concept I've never heard of before. Mm -hmm. The idea of letting yourself feel an emotion without trying to rush for the antidote of that emotion. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so and so as soon as you mention like that, you know, when someone is feeling anxious and depressed, why don't we give them time first and just connect with them and show them love and an excessive amount of it because at that point they need it, they need like a top off of love. Um, it reminded me of, of that concept of like pausing for a second and saying, oh, hold on, let me just feel what I'm feeling. Okay, now let's go and ahead and like figure out how I can how I can sort mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that, you're right. Like Islam does allow you to to do yeah, that bro. without falling out of the realm of like um, what we should be doing as well. Habibi, the thing is, um, the inspiration that we get from all of these great stories in the Quran is Allah says these are the best stories, right? The inspiration that we get from them is to build perspective. Like yeah. in a story, you're able to hear how it starts, you hear all the traumas, and then you also hear how it got how it got solved at the end, and it gives you a happy ending or a lesson or a perspective from it, right? But you are still in your story. You don't know where relief is gonna come from. Wow. Just imagine a child that you're holding in your arms, that it's happy, it's fixed, the entire world is great. Like you your own child, have you been your father holding, 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 holding your child and throwing him in the air, like ah! And they get scared for a second, bro. And the moment you grab them again, like, ah, everything is fine, man. Like, that's how your life is. Marratu or marratain. Allah says every year, once or twice, something is going to happen to you. And also after Uhud, bro, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa teeth knocked out, damaged half, uh, like he, he got a, a, a part of his helm stuck inside of his head. 
all right? Iron rings, iron clad rings in his head. Some Sahabis said like Talha losing their fingers. Like Talha was fighting and protecting the Messenger of losing his fingers. And the only thing Talha says, ah. he was trying to cope with it, right? Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib, his own uncle, be mutilated and killed. So many great Sahabas, alhamdulillah, all of them being murdered, bro. And what did Allah say? Allah said, hey, these are days. These are days that happen to everybody. Sometimes they come to you. Sometimes they come to somebody else. Ain't nobody in this world, Faisal, that is not feeling the difficulties that you are feeling. Nobody. And not only that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ don't have any grief. Don't be uh, uh, anxious about it because in the end, maybe not today, but in the end, you, you are going to be lifted up. You'll be the winner. And that's the guarantee that you and I have, man. I don't care if tomorrow I'm here all by myself and the entire world is burning because there is going to be a solution that I don't expect. Let Allah, let, let Allah bring it, man. It's fine. Yeah. Just accept that you just don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, man. Put that through your head, you know? Sometimes it's hard to like, uh, it, it's, it's something that's hard to balance, right? Because because if you reflect on the fact that, you know, oh, like I'm only 26 and there's surely going to be really big challenges in my life, perhaps. Like if I'm, if I'm mm -hmm. able to live, you know, more years, in nah. those years are going to be, uh, there's going to be times where things are going to be really rough. I might lose a loved one. I might like, you know, may Allah protect us, end up having a mm -hmm. crash. I might lose a limb. You just don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes when you think about the idea, you don't know what's going to happen. Sometimes that can be scary. But I suppose you have to balance that out with the hope of like, um, like you said, understanding that overall, if you stick to what um, Allah has commanded us, uh, we're going to be winners in the end. Yeah, uh, man. And, 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 and everything does eventually come to an end as well. Uh, but I, I think about that sometimes. Like sometimes I think like, oh man, like I've lived 26 years and yeah. in those 26 years, uh, people have passed away. Uh, people, uh, close ones of mine have had, have had illnesses. I've um, broken parts of my body. Uh, there's been uh, times where finances have been great and times where finances have been really bad and, mm. and so on and so forth. And I think, wow, I'm 26. So let's say, inshallah, I'm able to live another 26 years. That's like a whole 26 years of, again, trials and tribulations and also wins. <laughs> but you have to balance it out. Otherwise, you could also get a bit like worried, right? And like start feeling anxious about something that hasn't even happened yet. Well, Habibi, the perspective that Islam brings us is that we have qadr. And yeah, they yeah, comprehend yeah. this for a second. Just hear me out, all right? Qadr is a mechanism that allows you to cope with what has befallen you. And it will never be an excuse for whatever you do in the future. That's what Qadr is. Whatever has befallen you, it was meant to happen. But yeah. whatever you can do, you don't know what your potential is. So you are able to go to the max, bro. A discussion between Adam and Musa السلام, on Yom Al Qiyamah. Adam is gonna uh, Adam is gonna stand there and Musa is gonna come and complain and be like, Yeah, Adam, our father, why did you need to sin and why did you cause all of us to go down to this world? You know what the Messenger وسلم, said about the answer of Adam السلام. He goes, Adam said to him, Oh my son, why? Why are you holding me responsible? for the qadr of Allah that you and I were supposed to go to this world. It was going to happen anyways. He didn't use it as an excuse or I was supposed to sin. He didn't say that. He says the fact that the calamity happened, that we needed to all go out of Jannah, was written already. That was so. That was definitely going to happen. Ain't no point here arguing with me why, what, how. Things happen. Let it go. And then the Prophet smiled and he said, Wallahi, Adam has won from Musa. You know what I mean? Like, that's the perspective, man. Everything that's happened to me, Faizu, I had times, wallahi, thumu, wallahi, I was struggling with like four euros or six euros for an entire day. And that was including cleaning supplies, uh, clothes, or expenses that I didn't expect. So just calculate six times 31, right? That was my budget. That was all I had. I lived on the other side of the country. My parents were like three and a half hours away from me. Uh, I was in a... Uh, in a, in a social bubble of only me, myself, and I, and that's in the internet, of course, we got that, thank God. Uh, yeah. uh, Allah, alhamd, that was everything, man. And that was my loneliest Ramadan in my life, because that, that was like for a year and a half to two years, I, I, I lived life like that. Bro, the one thing I have acknowledged 
to myself is this. I need to go through this. Otherwise, I won't be able to appreciate what's going to come after this. I didn't know how. I didn't know what. I didn't know when. Years after years after years. And if I look 10 years later, 10 years later, Allahumma lak alhamd, I've been blessed. Wow. Right now, I have stability. I'm living on my own. Uh, in the most comfortable way, Allah Mubarak, I'm able to, to, to chill with myself and spend time with myself and spend on myself, take care of myself, and especially intellectually uh, educate myself, you know? And that's an empowerment. I'm not limited by my finances to the degree for food, drinks, and necessities, and even some fun stuff. Come on, let's be honest. You know, clothes like this, man, they're not expensive necessarily, but bro, they give they me... They sure do look expensive, Mohammed. That's, that's the trick, man. Drift yeah. shop, bro. That, I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> anyway, Allah was sad. But that way of, of, of appreciating these things gives me stability. And I know people who have more than me and who are depressed and they don't have more. Yeah. So Allah made me go through all of that struggle to actually be happy with this. And some people never went through that struggle and they're unhappy with this. Alhamdulillah, I've lived my life the way I have, man. Alhamdulillah. You know what, you're right, There's that's that's the perfect, uh, that's the beauty of perspective is, I suppose perspective is like basically the ability to step out of your self almost yeah. and look at your situation objectively as opposed yeah. to looking at it, as it like from your own perspective um, yeah. and, and therefore like giving, like being able to look at it and say, okay, I, I'm in this situation because of this. This is, if you know what, what I, th I find a, a quite, kind of a cool way to give perspective is I oft, uh, if I manage to get myself to, um, to say, if somebody else were in your shoes, what would you advise them? Because that gives you perspective because you're now, because it's always easier to advise someone else. Right? Mm -hmm. Because you have your own yeah. excuses. Because yep. if I say, let's say for example, I'm like unable to uh, get to. Like, let's say for example, like I'm, um, I'm unable to get to work. Right, like my car's mm -hmm. broken down. I'm unable to get to work. Mm -hmm. um, I would say to myself, like, okay, well, what's it? Well, I'll say to myself, like, oh, what's important to me? Well, it's important for me to go to work. And um, can you go to work another way? Yeah, I could get the bus. Oh, but I don't want to get the bus because like uh, it's cold and I have to uh, walk to the bus stop and then I have to get train. It's not worth it. And this, that, the other, right? I make these excuses for myself. But if I say to myself, okay, advise, s act as if you're advising somebody whose car's broken down. And then I would say to them, well, okay, how important is it that you have to actually do your work from work? Can you work from home? No, I have to go to work. Okay, fine. If it's that important to go to work, what are your options that you have? You can take public transport. What's the what's the cons of that actually there's no cons of that so take public transport or can you like book an uber but but what all it does is it gives you perspective it allows you to start thinking strategically it allows you to start thinking yeah. logically without yeah. that person's emotions um which that person is actually you so yeah, i find yeah, a good yeah, way yeah. to give perspective is to kind of try and advise and i actually um I like speaking to some brothers in the office because what some brothers in the office often do is they ask questions that um, allow you to think for yourself. And that's what a great therapist does, right? A great therapist, mm. um, what they do is they don't ever advise. They ask questions. That's what they do. And w what they do in, in asking questions, they help you start solving your issues. So it would be amazing if we, when we're going through some sort of hardship or challenge, if we were able to ask questions to ourselves, maybe even oh, like wow. literally out loud asking ourselves questions. How does this make you feel? Is this something you can change um what is the worst case scenario how would you deal with the worst case scenario how likely is the worst case scenario do you have a do you have other options um is this something that you can change uh is there something good that you can take from this i remember thinking to myself that there's something good that i could take from something recently it was literally this morning i was thinking um something happened oh yeah i lost uh, a piece of footage recently right yeah. and we all know that feeling bro like yeah. you lot you put so much work into it and you wanted to yeah. release it to the world and you lost it right but it was also the first time i was doing this kind of content and as fun as it was for me to produce and as well as i thought it went well it was like an online webinar um uh perhaps it wouldn't have been best uh for for, for like to be to be published and mm. i already i told myself that already but then what really put things into perspective was this morning i thought to myself um I thought to myself, I watched a video over the weekend, actually. And that video was of this editor who he's a professional uh, video editor. And he said, never put out your first draft. Right. And I thought, wow, I should apply that to anything in my life. <laughs> and it made me realize that that video that I shot, the, the, the webinar, that was my first ever time doing it. So that was, in, yeah, in yeah. that was for all um, 
uh, for all uh, uh, terms and purposes, my first draft, right? Yeah, Cortex yeah, 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 My yeah. first draft. And so perhaps it wouldn't have been my best version of it. And then I became right. grateful. I was like, wow, that's a positive and an advantage that I could take from that. So, um, so yeah. Bro, that, that's a nice this, is, this, this is a method that the Messenger of Salah used to do so much so that Ulama actually wrote about it. They called it Tafa'ul. Framing things positively. Just framing one of the Sahaba lost his leg. He lost his leg after one of the battles, right? You know what the people used to say to him? Not like, hey, how are you coping? How are you doing? Is everything all right? Can you, can you get along with your cane? You know what they said to him? They said, bro, your leg beat you already to Jannah. Like, what, what's wrong with you, man? Like, Come yeah. on, your leg is faster than you and already there. And that's perspective, bro. That's putting things differently. The message just allows in negotiating. And negotiating is stressful, it's difficult. You have to make sure. And this is something that people don't appreciate, in my opinion, too much about the Sira. They look at it as the message just allows being this big boss and everybody always following him. Bro, he has to deal with leadership. When you're leading, you have to deal with opposites' powers, right? He's not the only one speaking to people. His Sahaba can change their opinion and can cause potential fitna. All right? You don't know which among the Sahaba are necessarily from the, from the, from the truthful ones. And you don't know who are already from uh, um, Allah Muhammad, from the Munafiqeen. Only he knew, but the other Sahaba didn't know. He and Hudayf and Yamana knew, right? So majority of the Sahaba, they didn't know if that person who's speaking to them right now might be potentially somebody who doesn't have this the best thing for uh, like the best uh, how do you say that i don't say that bad man they don't have the uh, the best interest at heart of the messenger salasim right so he need to make sure that he knows what the sentiment is with the sahaba okay they've been traveling for hours what else uh, they really were looking forward for after all of these years to finally do umrah again okay what else um uh, i already promised them that they are gonna go and visit the house of allah okay what else uh, they are already wearing the clothes for ihram and they're pressured and they're afraid and Uthman is already gone for a couple hours. I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe there's going to be a war. And on the other hand, what was with the Quraysh? What did they want? They don't want us to come in because they, they, they will lose in their opinion. Okay, what can we get out of there? They want their, um, their captives of our people to remain with them so they can torture them. That, that's, that's a problem. Our people are not going to like that. And they want our captives of them to be released to them. I'm not gonna lie. And he made all of these decisions, bro, with perspective in mind. If I do this, then the initial threat is gonna go down, and then we can fry. So by accepting a harm, accepting a difficulty, you are creating potential. Look at it like that. It's just a transaction. A transaction of time. Are you willing to be patient with difficulty? For potential greatness and success, and I say hell yes. Wow. Yeah, it's true, bro. Like when you like again when you're putting it into perspective, like patience equals like a massive reward. But it's so mm. difficult, bro. It's so difficult to like to to have that patience when at the time, man. It reminds you of the hadith when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Patience is at the time of the calamity." Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And also Allah says, mm -hmm. Hey, glad tidings to those who are patient. Y'all succeeded. Mm -hmm. So I know it's difficult, but that's the holy grail, if you want to call it that, yeah. for, for, for sakes of using the word, right? That's mm -hmm. what we are all after. Patience and coping, bro. This dunya is going to go. I don't give a crap about it. I mm -hmm. like the fact that I can exercise my talents. That's something that I look forward to, developing myself, learning, becoming successful. But not because I'm actually looking to accumulate something, because I'm going to I'm gonna die, things are going to stay here. So I have perspective. If I lose it, I lose it. If I gain it, I gain it. But what I don't accept is this world taking determination from me. This world has no right to harm me and harm my perspective and harm my emotional state. I rather want the world to be harmed than my own integrity of my own mind being harmed. You know what I mean? Mm. Never, bro. Don't let anybody play with your emotions, mm. especially in the dunya. Yeah, it's very true. Very true. It's crazy how, like, whenever we speak about things, uh, like for the two for the over two hundred episodes that we've done in Fresh Ground, mm. everything relates to patience, bro. Since episode <laughs> one, yeah. no, it's true, bro. Like, it's like a common theme in Fresh Grounded, like. 
since episode one, like we have these deep conversations and at the end of it, we're like, oh, like patience fixes that. Patience fixes that. Patience fixes that. You know, in Allah, you know, Allah is indeed Allah is with the patient. It's just uh, patience is like so important. And then it's like, well, there's a reason why it's so important Islamically because clearly there's so many advantages to it. And then there's also a reason why it's hard. Like I find patience very difficult. Anyone who listens to Fresh Divided knows that because I speak about it all the time. And Sam says it as well. Sam finds it really difficult. Um, but why? Why do we find it difficult? Perhaps because the reward of it is so great. Like is anything that... The, if the reward is so great, is it going to be easy to attain? Like okay, it's so, so just, easy just, to say sabr. Just look at just look at a game you're playing. If you get good in the game, doesn't that take away from the fun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, if yeah. you get too good with patience, bro, it takes away from the fun, man. Come on, <laughs> you gotta leave something there, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, people who feel like they have accomplished everything are the most depressed of everybody. They don't have perspective growth. They don't have anything they're working towards. The only thing they're working towards is, and even subhanallah. This is one rapper, right? This is one rapper. Uh, this kid uh, became quite big, right, in this country. Okay. And when he was at the top, he started being depressed. So people were like, oh, what happened? Oh, no, we love you. Ah, please don't be depressed. Ah. You know what he said? He said, the anxiety of someone taking my place at the top is killing me. Uh, and you know, what he, you, know, you know when he got happy? You know when he got happy? And he said this honestly. He says the moment the pandemic happened, I got happy, man, because I knew these people don't have the the the, the, the ability anymore to um, develop their skills, so they they can't beat me. Everybody's stuck in their house. Everybody's feeling bad. <laughs> I'm not alone anymore, bro. I don't want to live that life. Yeah, it's negative, bro. You know, um, uh, um, um, uh, Yusuf is a brother that we have uh, a freshly grounded who does a cooking show made halal. He's a he's a he's a chef, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've and seen it. I was asking him about like this whole Michelin star thing. I was like, what is it about? Like, why is it so important? Who, like, I, I, one thing I didn't even know that the same Michelin company who uh, does the Michelin star for restaurants is actually the same company as the tire company, Michelin. Like, it's the same Michelin company, which wow. makes no sense. But, um, okay. uh, yeah, so anyway, I was asking about it and he told me a story as well, which is so similar to what you just said about the rapper. He said that there was this man in i'm gonna tell the story wrong now but there's a man in france i believe who had a mission star restaurant and he worked his whole life to get a mission star restaurant and also what he said is that when you have a michelin star restaurant you you don't just get it you you have to keep it so your yeah. company has to constantly remain and they keep checking right and he drove himself so crazy and his workers so crazy in making sure that they keep that because he never wanted to lose it that he ended up um killing himself or, or, mm. or dying because yeah. of it in some way mm. it caused his death right because of the stress of it and um and it goes to show like you're saying like depressed like you would think that oh this guy's got a michelin star restaurant like he must be so happy must be so rich must be so content like anyone mm. who ever owns a restaurant like that's the dream but he's like killing himself over literally over over, over trying to keep it and therefore probably the least happy he could have been so yeah there's yeah. richness and contentment isn't there Definitely, man. Well, lie, definitely. And even the thing is, Faisal, li live your life with this. Everything you gain or accumulate, you must be ready to lose it. If losing that thing that you've got, how good and how much khair it might be in it, if that will damage you, that thing is not good for you. And I goes as far as even putting the marriage in there, getting kids in there. If your marriage is something that you're not able, not, 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 how, how do you say it? If you lose it, if Allah takes it away from you, that that's gonna completely bring Faisal down and get your ethics down and make you angry against Allah and not patient anymore, bro. That marriage is not good for you because mm -hmm. then you're putting something in a place that only Allah exists, only Allah deserves. That that's 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 the way to protect yourself, man. Everything you've got, you must be ready to lose it because those are things. You are not a thing. You are not something that's just. How'd you say that? Like, I, can't, I can't take a quality out of you You know what I mean It's not like I can just yeah. get out of throw. That, That's your fiber man Your DNA Make sure that that's step fast And whenever you've got something Thank Allah for it But be ready to lose it every day 100% 100% um, uh, Before we round up uh, The podcast Mohammed, uh mm -hmm. I wanted to ask what You spoke to me on the phone the other day And you said that you um, Came across an ayah in the Quran And it just Related so much to mental health, and it, and it like almost like gave you an epiphany. What ayah was that? Do you remember? 
Bro, it was actually what I told you about the mother of of of, of Musa, man. As Allah subhanahu wa taala just makes it so 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 understandable, like He's sympathizing with her pain. We finally brought you your son back to you so your eyes can rest and 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 you don't feel that not anymore. And even Maryam alayhi salam, the mother of Jesus, she's actually saying, I, I I wish, I wish I was dead and forgotten by everybody. That no one knew me anymore, alone giving birth. And Allah is saying to her, just don't worry about. It. You know what? You know, here you go. There is water fresh. You can drink it. We'll provide you with fruit. And your son will speak to you. My mother, you step fast. Relax. It's fine. Comforting people, man. That's the one thing I'm going to do. I'm not even going to go and like, okay, what can I do for you? I'm like, hey, listen. Just talk to me, man. Just hang out with me. Just stay around me. That's the thing that people need, bro. And now let me give this advice to everybody and myself as well. Make sure that you build a safe household. Don't look for a spouse that looks fine, but look for a spouse that will give you comfort. Every time the Messenger needed comfort, he rushed home. He wasn't afraid about that, man. That, that perspective, Habibi, of comfort, uh, love, raw love is the way I'm going to frame mental health in right now. From, from this day on, inshallah. Inshallah. Wow. Well, Mama has been incredibly beneficial and I love speaking I love to you. Um, I, I know that, you know, this episode we wanted to, you know, you mentioned that you wanted to speak about mental health and you wanted to focus it around that and, and you have done so. And in fact, you've gained, uh, you've given me a completely different perspective on it too. I love that. You know, sometimes we don't remember that like the first kind of course of action is to is to shower the person with love and, and attention um, and then trying to understand it and decode what perhaps could be uh, upsetting them uh after that or like through that um sometimes we like panic and try and just like find the antidote and so it's yeah really man interesting. yeah 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 like don't preach first connect bro yeah people can wow. always look up ayat they can man it, what do you think if they don't type in depression and islam that they don't find 100 mashaykh speaking about all these beautiful ayat about patients like, we can get there but first you need to just make sure that they have a cushion are right, you safe now the people around you that care for you we have a bond you'll be all right Whenever I don't know how I don't know, we're gonna be alright, man. Don't worry about this. Man. Mm. And if you're not, in the meantime, you can hang out with me. You know that 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 yeah. that's the thing. Yeah, Please yeah, yeah. Put that in your DNA. Wow. Jazakallah khair, bro. I, I really, really yeah, appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time. You're always so generous with your time to us. And um, uh, inshallah, we can catch up soon, man. Let's let's uh, l- 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 let's do this again soon. I've actually got a, a, a kind of like a a thing that we're um, potentially working on. That I wanted to actually get your take on. So actually, while um, uh, let's end the podcast, but just stay there for me, and then I'll, I'll hit you up about it now, inshallah. All right then. Yeah. Hey, so let me let me please thank you for the fact that like let, let me tell you guys how this happened. I, I was I was reading so much about uh, like I study psychology. I'm not really good at it, but I study it and I love it. Uh, and I uh, I'm also a little student of the religion, a student of a student of a student of the religion. Um, so I was just reading up about what Islam says about this and obviously what, 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 what experts in the field say about mental health. And then I really just felt bad that I couldn't do anything about it. So I just called Faisal. I said, listen, Faisal, I don't want to intrude. I don't want to... Can I please speak about whenever you're free? And he didn't even say, well, bro, I'm not really sure. What's it going to do for us? Blah, blah. He said, no, bro, immediately. If you want to help the people out, I got you, man. Faisal, wallahi, thank you for that love. No, I, well, think, I thank you for always turning to us and you feeling like our platform is always the right one. So I appreciate that, bro. All right, man. Jazakallah khair. And everybody, thank you so much for watching uh, this week's episode of Fresh Degraded. And we'll see you again, inshallah, next week. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.